It's my great pleasure having um, Suleiman Alatov uh, with us today, who is the CEO of the Middle East um, Investment Company based in uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, we just started the Global Arab Business Meeting uh, with some words of optimism. We talked about uh, the economics of the Arab Spring. And I think the main view was that uh, revolutions um, should maybe uh, move into more something what we call evolution, evolution and stability, working on governance, working on um, uh, more economic freedom. And I think that's what you're doing in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is um, a baking of stability. I think you are the largest um, economy uh, here in the Gulf. And uh, of course, your company is a main investment company as you invest um, in all the um, countries around in the Gulf and uh, even to the north, to the west, uh, in the Middle East. So, um, uh, Silan, uh, what is your view on um, economic growth uh, and the way forward? Um, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, yes, we have, as you said, uh, stability. And this is very important. Yes, the Arab Spring is very nice, and what happened in Tunisia and Egypt is useful. There was uh, some very strict regimes, we, dictators or something. Now, the, the step the people they have taken is very good step, which is leads to transparency and stopping the corruption. What what what, what happened? Yes, 2011. The expectation for the growth in in, in some Arab economies like in Egypt, 1% only, from, uh, from 5% last year to 1% this year. And Tunisia the same, it's 1.5. But I don't like to look at just the present. If you are looking at the future, I think the Arab Spring is very useful. Uh, these things will abstract at least or will help other foreign investors to come to those two countries, at least they know what's going on. There is governance, there is clearance, everything is clear. As I told you, I'm, I'm happy about what happened, but if you ask me about the problem in Egypt, the people, still they are looking at the past. Yes, there is a problem in the past, there was a problem in the past, but you, they have to look at the future. The pride of, as Egypt, the, the tourism in Egypt is 11% of the GDP and now it's only 10 percent i mean not 10 percent of what they have got last year i think you're absolutely right uh, Suleiman. you know if i just quote uh, henry ford the famous uh, industrialist uh, from the us he basically said uh, history is spunk we need to look into the future and of course you know i wouldn't uh, agree fully with henry ford we have to respect our culture yeah we have to respect our legacy but for the economy we need uh, entrepreneurs like yourself uh, okay. change makers uh, people who take a risk if you don't take a risk today, you know, we will always um, live in the past. That's so right. Living in the future means basically more emphasis on entrepreneurship. And I think maybe that's um, what we can achieve now with the Arab Spring, moving what I would call a corporate Arab Spring, where entrepreneurs uh, uh, go forward and make the changes. This is what we were talking about last month. Uh, we said, OK, we had the Arab Spring for the people. Still, we, we need like, like this for the corporate corporate work and business. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, the, the Saudi economy is 25% of the Arab GDP. The Saudi economy is almost 45 to 50% of the GCC economy. It's one of the largest 20, 20 great uh, economy in the world. The problem is still in Saudi Arabia, the transparency is not what we are looking for. Hmm. And the good thing about King Abdullah, he is, as, as he has got the commission now, there is new commission has been formed to fight the, uh, the corruption and these bad things. Usually in the third world you find it. In Saudi Arabia there is a big demand for business. It's now open. The government for 2011, they are injecting 150 billion US dollar on the infrastructure. For the energy, they are planning to inject about 300 billion US dollars within five to seven years. Mm. All these things will get the base to make the, the country ready for foreign investors. I talked to many of them, but the, there are some problems like transparency. It's, it's in fact for them, yes, it's a big problem, but we are in the country, we know what's going on and usually we get used to it. Yes, it's very difficult and hard for us, but 
you have to work. And there are changes going on in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Just looking into you know the new rights for women, like on on you know the uh, election side, that uh, you know more and more you know uh, women rights are coming in. So you go step by step, I think, which is uh, the right approach in all directions. And uh, as uh, Saudi Arabia is the most important economy in the Arab world, I think uh, uh, we need stability there, which is um, also reflecting then on the other countries uh, around. Uh, what is your view on Europe? You know, because Europe is spying uh, a lot of um, the energy uh, produced and exported in Saudi Arabia. Europe is now in a very sluggish state. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe um, also countries like Saudi Arabia uh, could guide Europe in the right direction, maybe investing more there uh, and uh, on the sovereign wealth funds and, um, and helping Europe to get out of this uh, very great situation. Uh, look, what happens in Europe is a big... I think, I think, we have seen only maybe 70 or 75 percent of the true problem. There is, as, as before, this, they call it the pig. Now it's two I, pig. Yes. Then they will add S, pigs. A I don't know more, what's next. <laughs> we don't know what's next. Exactly. But I think we, it's not a matter of we want or not, we have. It's a matter of must yes. to support and help Europe. You know, because if something happened to Europe, it, it will reflect us. On all of us, yeah. Our oil, the oil price will go down, the investment will, will be affected. Our investment there or they're investing in our country. So the countries. world is quite interconnected yes, today. It's Globalization. Connected. That's right. And we just can't do things on our own. And I think it's maybe also one main message here at this uh, Horace's Global Arab Business Meeting. We bring people from all around the world to come here and to meet, I think, uh, to build uh, a platform for trust. Because only if you know each other, I think you will do business with each other. That's right. It's not an arm's length transaction. We are all interconnected. So I believe we have to help them to help ourselves. Yeah. No, that's very good. I thank you so much, Suleiman. I think very inviting. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be glad uh, to continue our discussion, of course, today at our two o'clock session. Thank you. Thank you. Frank. Thank you so much, Suleiman. Have a good thank day. you.